So you just bought your camera and now you're realizing that you need to buy a few more things. Maybe you need to get some lights, a microphone. Do you need to buy one of these? No. Well, not yet. There's more important things for you to buy than one of those. And I'm gonna share that with you in this video. I know it can be pretty overwhelming when you're getting into video and all of the accessories that come with it. So I made this video with the top five most important things you need to invest in first so that you can save money and start shooting better video right away. You gotta just press record. My name is Nolan Molt with Think Media. And before we get into this list, I'm going to assume that one, you bought a a camera with a lens. Now you can buy a camera by itself, but typically when you're starting out, most people buy a camera with a lens, unless you accidentally bought just the camera. And in that case, go get a lens, you need one. I'm also going to assume that you have a computer or laptop, iPad, something to edit on. Now, if you don't have those two things, those things you will definitely need, but these are the five things that you're going to need. And the first thing is an SD card, not just any SD card, okay? When I first got started with video, I got the T3i, and I remember shooting video the first day I got it, and after about five or six seconds of shooting video, the movie would just automatically stop. It said movie stopped recording, because my SD card was not fast enough. So the one we recommend at Think Media is the SanDisk Extreme Pro SD cards. Now I recommend at least getting a 64 gigabyte SD card, uh, but I actually use the 128 SD card. Now both are fine and both have the same speed and at 170 megabytes per second, you're gonna be able to record in 4K. And so this is going to be a good SD card, whether you're shooting in 1080 right now or you eventually upgrade, you're gonna be able to use this SD card no matter what. Now the reason I recommend 64 kind of as the minimum is because that's gonna give you a lot of space to shoot, whether you wanna shoot in slow motion or in 4K, you're gonna have a good amount to work with. Now I got the 128 gigabyte SD card because sometimes I like to shoot vlogs where I'm shooting literally all day like hours of 4K footage and on that 128 gigabyte card I can get away with about six hours of 4K footage on the Sony a6600 which is amazing. Now for sit down videos like this I don't need to clear off my SD card every single time I shoot. I can usually get quite a few projects done on one SD card and then I'll go go in, I'll clear it up and start fresh. Now the SD card was number one because you literally need your SD card in order to shoot your video, record the audio, you're going to need that. And so that has to be number one. And number two is audio. Investing in a good audio setup is gonna take your YouTube videos to a whole nother level and really make you stand out and be professional on YouTube. Now most people think that a good audio setup is gonna break the bank, but Sean actually reviewed three microphones for less than $50 that can get you some pretty good audio. And so I'm gonna throw it over to Sean right now. So let's first jump into my favorite budget lavalier mic, and that is the Boya BYM1. And before we do a test of the Boya mic, I want you to hear just the on-camera mic. So we're shooting with a Sony a7 III, and any on-camera mic can be okay, but it's never the best. So we're in a kind of home office right now, no special audio treatment, and this is what the audio sounds like. So right now we're gonna plug in the Boya mic to see how good a $20 microphone can sound. Now you're hearing the Boya BYM1. So this is a lavalier microphone, which means it's just clipped right onto my shirt. You can pick this up on Amazon for right around $20 here in the US. And one of the reasons I love this microphone is because it has a ton of cord with it. So you'll plug this into the mic jack in your camera, and then it has a battery that goes inside of it, and it has a camera mode and also a smartphone mode. So what's cool about this microphone is you can use it with your existing smartphone or your DSLR, and if you use it with the DSLR, there's a little battery that goes in there, and it comes with one battery, but I also wanna recommend ordering extras because we all oftentimes accidentally leave it turned on. And so the combo of these two right here can really level up your audio. You get plenty of cable length in case you wanna shoot a video where you're very far away from the camera. And again, you just hook it onto any shirt or any piece of apparel, and you can get audio that sounds just like this. Now, one of the limitations of a lavalier microphone like this is that if you plug it directly into your camera, 
you only have the one audio source. So let's say you wanted to do an interview with somebody or do a collab with two people on camera, Boya actually has a $30 version that adds a second microphone with one plug. So ultimately it's gonna record on a left channel and a right channel, but we were able to test this out at NAB recently. Okay, so now you are hearing the Boya mics. We have the wires all hidden. We're lapeled up right here. And I'm sitting with Heather. How's it going again? Good. And it's actually a great option. Again, for just $30 here in the US, it is some serious audio improvement with a great price. Okay, for our next style of microphone, let's check out a shotgun microphone. Again, this is a lavalier mic. It hooks onto a person's body, onto their shirt somewhere. The shotgun microphone, of course, goes on top of the camera. And my favorite budget option is the Tackstar SGC 598. Now, this is a great microphone. It's powered by just one AA battery. And so you can always keep those on hand in case you leave the power on. You fire this guy up. And what's also nice about this microphone is it has a 10 10 dB audio gain boost that is optional. The reason I love that is there are some Canon cameras that have kind of weak um, audio amps internally. And so by getting more power out of the microphone, you can make your camera sound even better, whether you have an, a 70D or like a T5i or a T6i. A mic like this with that gain can really dial in your audio to sounding awesome. So now let's look at how the Tackstar mic sounds compared to this Boya mic. So right now you're hearing the Tackstar mic. I'm sitting about two, three feet away from the camera and we're in the same audio setting. This microphone retails for about $26 here in the US and is should be readily available around the world. And the one downside to a shotgun mic is if you move too far away from the camera, you're gonna probably wanna use a different audio option, something that's either wireless or that has a lot of cable like the Boya we just talked about. But I would definitely recommend a shotgun mic like this for also vlogging. You've seen popular vloggers putting that right on top of their mirrorless camera or their DSLR so that you have a little bit better audio knowing you're always gonna be in a relatively close distance recording that audio. And what's also nice about a microphone like this is if I was to be doing a collab with say two people on camera and we were both sitting like right here and here, one shotgun mic is usually sufficient to pick up audio like that. So now we're back to the on-camera audio. So let me know in the comments if you've been noticing the difference between having these microphones and not having them, and what do you think they sound like. But we just heard the Tackstar. Now we're gonna move to a different style of microphone, which is a USB microphone. So this actually plugs into your computer, not your camera, and we're gonna record this on a separate laptop so you can hear the audio of this blue snowball. This is the Blue Snowball Ice, and this retails for right around $50 here in the US, although a lot of times it's on sale for around $40. And this is a very popular microphone for gaming, for doing voiceovers. Again, you can see I'm holding it here, but typically it'd be sitting on a desk, People use it for podcasting. And if you're gonna use it for a shoot like this, you would need to sync the audio in post. So we're recording the audio in Adobe Audition, just getting that audio file, and then we'll sync it up with the video file later in editing. And by now you might have noticed that actually having different microphones for different scenarios can be important because none of these microphones are really one size fits all. It depends on your end goal, the end intent, and what you think you'll be using it the most for. Now, around $50, this isn't super cheap, but I just want to make a mention here, I haven't personally tested it, but the Neewer NW7000 USB mic comes in for around $20. It's a USB microphone like this, you can have a stand, or if you wanna have kind of an arm like you've seen me shoot our live streams before, you can add that in, and it's a very affordable option to get a microphone sound like this. And typically, USB microphones sound the best, but again, they're in the shop. You, you usually don't talk to them from very far away. You wanna be pretty close. And so it's not really a one size fits all, but if you wanna do narration, you wanna have that crispy voiceover, you want really superior audio, or you're doing live streaming or gaming, definitely consider checking out a USB microphone. And I'll link up the Neewer and the Blue Snowball Ice so you can do some more research on those in the YouTube description. Now those are three great options to invest in. And one tip I wanna add here is if you're using a shotgun on microphone maybe to vlog but you want to sit down and record some videos just like this then I recommend getting a mic stand which you can pick up for less than $20 on Amazon.
So here's what the audio sounds like with the shotgun mic placed on top of the camera. And here is what it sounds like with the microphone placed just out of frame. This is going to allow you to get your shotgun microphone closer to your mouth. And really that is what is going to help get you the cleanest, clearest audio for your videos. Now, if you wanna see a video where I show you how to set up your microphone for videos just like this to get good audio, then you can click on the card right now to watch that. I'm also gonna have all the links for these products as well as these videos that are really gonna help you guys and they're gonna be in the description below if you wanna check those out. Now, if you have a little bit of a bigger budget to spend, I really recommend investing in a nice shotgun microphone. Right now, I'm shooting on the Rode VideoMic NTG and we actually reviewed the NTG versus a DD microphone and you can check out that video by clicking on the card as well and find out which one is going to be best for you. Coming in at number three is a tripod. Now the reason a tripod is at number three and not number two is because you can kind of get away with makeshifting a tripod by maybe stacking up some books and setting your camera on top of that where with audio you just can't makeshift anything to get good audio. You really need to invest in a microphone. Now getting a good tripod is really important and you can see here in my wife's shot she was able to move the camera by the window to get really nice lighting to frame up her shot really well and to bring that camera up to eye level now even though she doesn't have any lights in this scene it still looks really really good and that's because she was able to use that tripod to get it by the window getting a tripod is really going to be able to free you up and let you move around the house or wherever you're shooting so that you're not stuck in one position wherever your camera fits but now with a tripod you can move around you can find some good light find a good background and shoot your videos that way. If you're looking for a tripod that's less than $100, you can check out this review by clicking on the card and there's also gonna be a link to it in the description. Overall, it is a great tripod for $90 and sometimes it goes on sale and it's even cheaper. But this is what we've been using at Think Media as well as my wife. That is the same tripod that she used for her shot and it's lightweight, easy to move around and you're able to get it up past six feet tall. So if you are tall like me, you're able to bring your camera up to eye level when you're standing. Number four on the list is lighting. Investing in lighting is really what is going to give you a good looking image. Now you can get a nice camera, a nice lens, but we all know with bad lighting, it's just not going to look good. Now besides being able to just improve your overall video quality and the way that it looks, using lights allows you to kind of move around and focus more on the background. So instead of maybe shooting all of your stuff in front of a window because that's the only light you have, if you have some lights, it allows you to have good lighting wherever you are. And now that you have a tripod and some lights, you can start to focus on your background. And we all know that having a good background is key for YouTube videos. Now getting some good lighting really doesn't have to break the bank either. I remember using some soft boxes that cost about $50 off of Amazon and it really, really improved my video quality. And so you can pick up one for 50 bucks and there's one linked in the description where it's two of them for a hundred dollars and using those two soft boxes are going to really improve your video. We also reviewed this LED light kit that is a really great option. It's two lights, it's for $200. But the nice thing about this is you're able to dim down those LED lights so you can really get precise with your lighting and your ISO and your settings so that it all looks really good. You're also able to change the color temperature so you can match it to your lamps or you can match it to daylight and you can have that different color variety with these LED lights, which is actually phenomenal for a $200 kit. Now, if you decide to go with that LED kit, I definitely recommend in getting some soft lighting and you can get some soft boxes for LED lights and those again are gonna be linked in the description, but using that soft box over the LED light is going to give you softer light which just helps things look more natural more cinematic and overall just give you more of a professional lighting setup before we get to the fifth thing you need to buy, I'm also gonna give you a bonus tip, but first like this video and then comment down below what is the next thing that you are going to purchase for your video setup. 
All right, the fifth thing you need to buy. Are you ready for it? I mean, we already got a tripod, we got a camera, SD card, a good audio setup. Well, this is where it starts to get a little more specific as to helping you and your specific needs. But overall, what I would tell someone to invest in after they have those four things is to invest in a nicer lens. Now you've been shooting on the kit lens and you've been able to really improve it with the lighting, but now you want to invest in a prime lens, something like the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4 lens that they have for EFM mount like the M50, or they also have for the Sony E mounts if you want to throw it on an A6600 or any of the other Sony Alpha lineup. Getting a nice prime lens, whether it's that one or a different one, is going to give you a sharper image. Your lenses actually can either dull your image or sharpen your image, and so a nice expensive lens, maybe something like a prime lens, is going Going to give you a sharper image you're going to be able to get a blurry background if you get something with a low f number this is also going to allow you to have better low light performance because that lens is going to open up more and let more light onto your sensor. So for all those reasons, it's really worth investing in some nice lenses to boost your video production. My bonus tip for you guys is if you're shooting outside a lot, I recommend not getting a new lens right away, but getting an ND filter. The reason I recommend this is because every single time that I'm shooting outside, I'm using my ND filter. This is a filter that I put on top of my lens and then allows me to shoot in a low f-stop number to get that depth of field or that blurry background. So remember to check the links in the description for all these videos and all of these product links. And if you're interested in learning more about ND filters and which one to buy, then click on this screen right now and I'll see you guys in the next video.